Welcome to another episode of Mickey J White Hat. I've got to say that last video I posted has gone pretty much viral. I've got to thank you very much. I've got hundreds of subscribers overnight, which is awesome. But what's really cool is the feedback. It's been fantastic. I've been seeing it on the Reddit forums, in the subreddit for programming and malware. I've seen it on the actual video itself and on my Twitter. Everyone's telling me what to do and how to do it, which is absolutely brilliant. It's what I've been after. So thank you very much for your feedback. I'm not going to go ahead and name you all because seriously, there's just too many people to name. But I've got everything from, please don't use audio, as in music in the background, use your voice. I've got other people saying, don't use that crummy video recorder anymore because it's not keeping sync with your audio. Um, and I've had recommendations of other products to use. So believe it or not, I'm actually using a different product. I'm using OBS to record just as the subscribers have wanted. So that is absolutely awesome. So thank you very much. And today, what are we doing today? Well, I'm not here to talk about how good my last video was, am I? Let's talk about a virus that a customer of mine got the other day, an SDR virus. Because it was a screensaver or SDR virus, they'd never seen it before. They got curious, they clicked it, they ran it, it killed them. So we're going to talk about SDR files today, Windows SDR files. So stay tuned after this, let's get right into it. So today, this is an email of a customer of mine has received, and it looks like just any other scammy spam sort of email. Obviously, we're all intelligent enough to open these things, but some of my customers, pff, I don't know, they open anything, I think. But look, um, what we've got here is a RAR file. That's the first thing that throws people off. Um, they look at the RAR file and they think, well, I'm used to viruses and zip files. They couldn't possibly be one in a RAR file. But of course, there is. So this particular RAR file, we're going to pull it out and have a look at what's inside. Now, we know that this is a scam or a spam or a virus. We know that already. So the first thing I normally do is I go up into the headers, pull down the header, and have a look to see where it's come from. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we are in the header, and the person that's come from, the domain suggests it comes from Russia. There is an original IP address down here. It's amazing how many web uh, email systems and things like that actually record the end user's IP address. So quite often a good place to start is the header. Now, why do I look in the header? First of all, it just confirms my thoughts. Yep, probably spam because I don't know anybody in Russia. But also, if it's a targeted attack, which I've seen a lot of those lately, then of course, you might need to present this as evidence later on in a court of law or something like that, depending on whether it's a random attack or a targeted attack. So here we have this email from Russia with an IP address. Now, first thing I would do is go and figure out where this IP address is and see if it matches the Russian extension on the domain. Now, I use uh, IPlocation.net, but you can go to Google and you can find any of the various IP locators out there, and it confirms it's from Russia. So I can go through here and get a little bit of information. Uh, I don't know anybody in Russia. The customer doesn't know anybody in Russia. So I would say this is not necessarily a targeted attack. This is just somebody spamming out an executable trying to get into this location. So let's go and have a look what's in that RAR file. So what I do normally is I save out the Outlook MSG file um, and also any attachments and also you can extract out the attachment. And here we have price spelt wrong, price list .scr. Now a little thing about screensavers. So screensavers are predominantly with SCR format a Windows file. They are usually an executable file. And the reason behind a screensaver and why they've got the SCR file is so they appear when you go into the desktop settings of the computer to allocate yourself a screensaver. Windows knows to look for .scr files. One of the things to note about screensavers is that they can pop up and run even when you've got your screen locked. And they've got some elevated permissions if you choose to install them. So a screensaver is a desirable way to get something into your system. Not only that, but people don't recognize what an .scr file is and they madly go ahead and double click and run it, not realizing it runs the same as an executable file. This episode brought to you by the Virus Doctor. Yes, I pull them apart, but he helps you get rid of them. Now, if you're watching this, you've probably played with screensavers and executables before, but just for those newbies out there, here's a bit of a description on fileextension.com. And of course, they go through here and tell you it's a Windows file, and they tell you it's executable. Um, they tell you all about it. 
So you can actually find out a bit of information there about this screensaver. First thing I'm going to do with this screensaver is right click open it with my Notepad++. I do this so that I can see in a way that's not running anything uh, what type of file it is. Now I can see straight away it's a PE file or it's a Windows file. It's got the MZ magic byte at the beginning there. Um, it's got a little warning that pops up if someone tries to run it in DOS mode. And I can see the sections put aside for the various segments. They've got the dot .text, the dot .r data, and all that sort of thing. So I've already got a bit of a hint as to what this is. Just to convince myself, I'm then going to open this up using a tool called PE Explorer. PE Explorer has kind of gone through those segments that are in the header and put them into some English for us. So we know it runs on the i386 platform or the x86 platform. And we know a little bit more about it. So it's a 32-bit PE header. Um, we can see the magic byte is listed there and we can see a little bit of basic information about it. So here we are, I've gone through the process of loading this up into VirusTotal. I've logged on as myself so that I can get extra information and give some feedback to the community. Um, VirusTotal, I've already got a, a video in my foundation series telling you how to use it, but basically it's saying that 53 engines out of 70 tell me this is malicious. Not a good way to start the day, is it? Now, I happen to know from looking at some of these names that this is a Trojan downloader that leads to ransomware. Um, quite a few nasties here. So one of the things I have done is I've picked one of the more, um, let's say, defining names. So not something that just simply says unsafe, that's useless. But I've taken one of these defining names and I've quickly jumped out to Google and found out what it's got to say about it. And here it says main dangers, stolen sensitive information, corrupted files, broken software and hardware. It sort of neglects to mention this is actually a ransomware as well. Um, but you can get a lot of information just from those names that come up in VirusTotal. Let's go back to VirusTotal and let's go to the community tab and see what people have got to say about it there. Quite simple. There we go. Ransomware. So straight away they're telling us what this is. We don't have to go much further with this. We know the SCR file is a ransomware. But let's just have a look at the details. So here we've got all the standard metadata. It again tells us it's a Win32 PE. So even though it's a .scr file, it's nothing more than an .exe file with a new name on it. Basically, it's a, it's a Trojan in more than one way than saying the word. Um, now, if we go across to the relations, it contacts one external URL, one domain, and it tells you there whom it contacts. Behavior, it tells you that it goes up and does a get against a particular website using PHP. It tells you what files it opens, it tells you what files it writes, and it pulls down an .exe file. So this is a Trojan in the sense that the file itself is not dangerous. It pulls down something dangerous, and that thing that it pulls down um, is actually a ransomware. Now, the actual host file, the SCR file itself, may drop other things like backdoors and other Trojans and things like that. But the main aim of the game for this one is this little randomly named executable here. And you can see all the registry keys and bits and pieces that it opens. So we've got a pretty good idea what this thing does. Now what I'm going to do is go across and dump it into hybrid analysis. And I've got a video as well on hybrid analysis. If you want to have a look at that in my foundation series. So we don't have to go through that in too much detail. But here we go. We've got a score of 100 out of 100. Pretty darn sure this is malicious. So if we do a bit of digging through this particular file. The things I found mostly of interest is this MITRE attack techniques detection screen tells us data encoding and data compressed. So, so it does things to your data that you don't really like. Lateral movement is an indicator that it can actually move between machines laterally, and it's going through remote desktop. It does discover what else is on the network, obviously because it needs to compress all those things if it can, um, and a lot of other little bits and pieces here. So very interesting little attack here. As we scroll down, you can get more and more information about this particular file. So we can see that it had a high detection rate. We can see which detectors detected it. We can see it reads the computer name, all kinds of stuff. It drops an executable file. It's interesting, this time when it ran in this sandbox, it got a different name. So that's a randomly generated name. We found an IP address in memory. 
that's where it goes off to to download that executable from. We can see the HTTP ports it transfers over. So we can see the IP address. I'd assume by now that IP address has been locked down. Uh, we've got a place here to read RDP connections and things like that. Uh, it's also got some spyware it's going to download for you. How convenient. Um, although, no, in this case, it's just accessing cookies. So maybe it's just looking to see what your system's all about. And we can keep going on and on and on. The things I normally look for, as I scroll to the bottom down here, are things like what's in the PE header, written in French. There we go, interesting. Um, and also any screenshots, which in this case, we've only really got the one screenshot, so there's not a lot going on. Um, it probably does everything without your knowledge in the background, and you only find out once everything is encrypted. There's the requests. Uh, it goes across over there and some extracted strings and then of course the files that pop out including that executable file so we pretty much now know that an SCR file is just an executable we treat it just like an executable so treating this just like an executable uh, in this case it's a PE header so it's got all the stainless segments that you would expect you can go to this particular Microsoft document uh, which I'll include a link to this down in the comments section sorry in the description but how to peer inside an executable file and in here it gives you all the information you need to know as to how the executable header works and how it gets to its first memory segment and runs now why is this of any use to you well it depends on how far you want to take it at this point you know it's an executable you know it's a virus you know it's a ransomware you don't really need to know what it does or how it does it but let's just say that you want to pull it apart a bit further well, you could open up something like Ghidra or IDA or Radar or something like that. And from there, you can actually get into the executable and have a bit of a look around. Now, you might find where it's come from in here. You might find the name of the person who was involved in it or something like that. So rather than going through this whole executable, I've also got a bit of a tutorial on how to use Ghidra up on YouTube here. You could, if you wanted to, just go search and you can search for strings and you could go through the string list to find out if there's any author's name in here or any domains at contacts or any raw code. Uh, in this case, we can tell from the fact it's got lots of strings in there. Um, and I can also tell from the fact that when I look in here, I've got all the normal tags. And when I look in the functions, it's in clear text that nothing's been used to compress this executable. And it doesn't appear to be encrypted in any real way. So looking in the header, I've worked out where the actual next function is that it runs. We've gone down into entry, and here we have the standard call entry and the disassemble code sitting over here. If we were to go in to look at the functions and how they graph together, there we go. So we can see that we are in this particular subroutine here, and from there, if I can get that floaty thing to go away, you can see how it goes through all these levels of things that it will do to your data. So rather than spending all day today going through and trying to disassemble into C code on this side, let's just have a look at this main function. So as you can see, this main function calls lots of little um, other functions. And in the end, wow, it's a lot there. Um, you've also got the command line. It's got all kinds of things that it queries and talks to. You can jump in and out and have a look here. So you're parsing the command line there, doing all sorts of mathematics to the inputs that come from that command line. If you really wanted to find out, you can now dig your way through this code and figure out exactly what it does. There's even a procedure here called terminate, which is interesting. So, so rather than pull this apart any further, um, you need to know a bit about assembly language, a bit about C code. Um, we're at that point where I would probably suggest we've pulled apart this SCR file as far as it's going to go. We know what it does. We know that the SCR file will probably be triggered when you double click on it. It'll go up to the internet. It'll download an executable file. It'll then write some files to your hard drive, possibly some spyware. It'll then start ransomwareing you by encrypting all your files, sending away a cipher key, and then popping up a display saying, hey, you've been encrypted, please pay me some Bitcoin. So that's what this is all about. I'm sure somebody out there with a lot more understanding of how assembly works can take it to the next step. No real point, we know it's a virus. And that's how we work with an SCR file. So thank you very much for your time today. Just a short video on SCR files. I hope that that explains a little bit to you about how they work. And until next time, have a great day.